Welcome back to Point of View, where we present all sides of the story and we get your voice in our broadcast. Now, as we speak, there is a poker game being played in Congress over the payroll tax cut. And host Chris Berg from The Chris Berg Show says they're playing with your money and my money. Let's go to the 1100 AM, the flag show host right now. Chris, you say that the problem is you and I don't even have a seat at the table but you've got someone in today who is at that table and has some answers for viewers and their family. Absolutely, Stephanie. And also, you know, they're playing a game with our money, but we don't have the seat at the table. This person is at the table and does have some answers. It's Mr. Senator John Hoven. Thanks for being with me tonight. I really appreciate your time, Senator. Um, let's start here. Yesterday, my uh, radio show had a lot of callers calling in. One, they're frustrated with what's going on in the gridlock in D.C. Two, people started to say, Chris, I feel like we're getting bamboozled with this two-month deal. And then today, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor comes out and says, hey, if President Obama would just come back to the Capitol, we could have this thing all done in 60 minutes, which just seems to add more fuel to this fire of frustration. First off, what's the major difference between the Senate bill and the House bill? And what's Eric Cantor alluding to when he says we could have this thing all over in 60 minutes? Chris, great to be with you. And look, we need to get it done. And that's what I've been telling everybody, whether it's in the Senate or in the House. As a matter of fact, yesterday I talked to Senator John McCain. Today I talked to uh, the uh, Senate Minority Leader, mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell. And what he's put forward, I think, could work. What essentially he says is, House, go ahead with the two-month extension, and Senate, Senator Reid, appoint the conference committee. Again, I go back to my main point, let's get it done. We want this payroll tax cut extended, uh, the unemployment insurance benefits continued, of course, uh, the doctor fix. And then the other thing is, remember, in this legislation is the Keystone Pipeline. That's legislation that I wrote, big time job creator, also a lot more energy independence for our country. So back to what I said at the outset, let's get it done. And that's my message to everyone involved. When you say get it done, you get it done for the two-month extension or the 12-month extension? Well, see, actually, that's why we're pitching something that I think can work. We do the two-month extension and start the conference committee so we get the full year package. And that's reaching out to everybody. That's the background I bring as a governor. At the end of the day, we work for the people of this great country, so we need to get our work done. This is a way I think brings everybody together, and I hope it works. And that's why, like I say, I'm, I'm pushing it hard with senators and members of Congress. I want to get back to the Keystone Pipeline, but first, in your opinion, do you think that the House Tea Party Caucus is hijacking this process? You know, I think that it's incumbent on all of us, House and Senate, and both parties to come together now. So my point to whether it's Tea Party, whether mm -hmm. it's Democrats in the Senate, whoever it may be, now's the time to come together and get it done. And, and again, I've laid out a clear path, and I'm going to keep pushing for folks to take that path and finish this up. Uh, we're doing the people's business. And so that's the work that, that's what takes precedence and that's what we need to do. You mentioned the Keystone Pipeline. You introduced that legislation to this bill. Um, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Job creator, uh, national security, energy independence. You mm -hmm. gave President Obama 60 days. Now, is there a door for him still to punt at the end of the 60 days? Or are you saying, hey, he has to red light or uh, green light this project in 60 days? It provides that he has to make a decision in 60 days. We need to get the job creation going. We also need to produce more energy so we're less dependent on the Middle East. But we also give more time for the route through Nebraska. That was the issue. There's not a 60-day limit there. So when state or anyone else comes out and says, oh, well, we can't do it in 60 days because of this issue in Nebraska, wrong. We, we provide time to reroute in Nebraska. We just say in 60 days, make the decision, move forward. Look, we need this energy in our country. We need the jobs in our country not sending this oil to China. This is how we did it in North Dakota. This is how we need to do it at the national level. And they've already studied this Keystone Pipeline XL for three years, three years. correct? Three years. They've gone through the full environmental impact statement. The sister pipeline, which we know about because it goes through North Dakota, that was done in two years. So let's get going. Let's get this economy going. Let's get people back to work. That was the feasibility study for the Keystone Pipeline XL. Another feasibility study here in the FM area. You just came from this meeting. Yeah. Uh, the FM diversion now gets signed off by the Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. What exactly does this mean for the diversion and for the valley? Oh, this is good news. Look, we need permanent flood protection in Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, the whole metro area, mm -hmm. Cass County, Clay County. This is about not only making sure people are protected, which is hugely important, but for the long term, it is more cost effective at the local, state, and federal level to have a permanent <clears throat> project in place, permanent flood protection, than be fighting the flood every year. Big step forward today with the Chief's report, 
Now we need to continue to work on the author on authorizing and funding the project. And of course, that's going to take some time. And uh, but we we do it every year. About 12 million this year, 30 million next year. But uh, local, state, and federal keep everybody working together, make it happen. About a week or so ago, I was in Harwood at the Harwood Community Center. They had the meeting about the diversion there. So my question is this. Um, I'm living in Harwood. There's people tonight watching upstream, and you say what to them about this project? You know, we have to continue to do everything we can to mitigate impacts upstream and downstream. And I know there's uh, issues upstream. We have to keep working on it. This is about, again, um, making sure that we have everybody working together, do the best job that we can. And so I understand there's some issues, there and we'll continue to work them. Now, all this stuff is important, but my toughest question of the night is right now, don't get nervous. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're going to ask. Final score, January 7th, Bison game. What's your prediction? You know, I am excited. Uh, go Bison. Uh, I'm going to go like 27 to 13. You heard it here first, 27, 13. I'm assuming you're taking the Bison, yes? I'm taking the Bison, of course. Right, I'm hoping to go to the game. <laughs> go Bison. Now, it's the holidays. By the way, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And you've got some special family news to announce here tonight in the hot box. Well, I, I, I agree. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And, yeah, my, our family is going to grow. Uh, I'm going to be a grandpa. My daughter's going to have a, a baby here, uh, um, be late spring. And so Mikey and I are thrilled as we can be and, and truly blessed. Congratulations on Chris, that, Senator. That's great fantastic. to be with you. Merry Grandpa Christmas. Grandpa Senator John Hoban, the new name. <laughs> Stephanie, there you have it. Here's the real key thing I want to ask you tonight is this, is that when you look at this payroll tax cut situation, we're talking about $40 roughly every paycheck. For a lot of people out there, that is a lot of money. So my question to you about this gridlock that we see, do you feel Congress right now, look, they've got the lowest approval rating. It's like 11% right now. Do you feel Congress is doing what's best for the American people, or do you feel like they're doing what's best for their re-election campaign? Right. Stephanie? Well, Chris, and too, with Eric Cantor coming out and kind of calling up President Obama, there's always some congressman or legislator or someone coming out and really just muddying the waters. Is this really, do you think, going to get done, or is it just going to go to the 11th hour like many of these other issues? There's no doubt it's going to go to the 11th hour. Again, the tricky thing is the, the game of politics. That's why I used the poker analogy earlier, because earlier in September, President Obama said, look, I want the one-year tax extension. Now he gets it, and now, obviously, because of Senator Hoban put in this Keystone Pipeline, very key piece of this legislation, but still, the Democrats are balking because they've got to couch out to their environmental constituents. All right. All right. Chris Berg from The Chris Berg Show, thanks for uh, coming in today. It's always a joy to see you. Now, you can be a part of our conversation always. Just go to 630pov.com right now to chat with us. Or you can go to our Facebook page. It's Valley News Live. Or even tweet us. Our hashtag is 630pov. Now, your tweets and your Facebook comments are already coming in. Here's what Joe says. It's both sides of the aisle. It is also Obama who was more worried about vacation in Hawaii than in creating jobs. Can the American people really say they are happy with a two-month extension? John says this. They are all to blame, and they're only doing what they think will get them reelected and further line their wallets. That's all they care about, no matter what they're trying or telling people. Look at the economy. There's the proof right there in black and white. Greg says Congress as a whole is at fault for all of our nation's troubles. If I don't do my job, I'm fired. Yet these overpaid people in Congress take the taxpayers' money and play with it like they're playing a game of Monopoly. The people vote them in and give themselves raises with our money. Both parties straight up. Uh, Rob says um, he's blaming Congress, as well as Scott says that they're all to blame and get rid of these politicians and get ethical people that care about this country. But Martin just says this, that he is pleading the fifth in this instance. Well, thanks for all of your comments. It's not too late for your voice to be heard on this issue. You can chat with us live right now at 630pov.com. You can tweet us your comments. Our hashtag is 630pov. Or get in touch with us on our Facebook page. It's Valley News Live. Coming up, have a bunch of kids traveling with you this weekend on Christmas. It may get you kicked off a plane like this unlucky family. Stay with us.